Hello, third grade, and welcome to your first bridge math lesson of the year. So this is a screencast by I'm recording my smart board right now. So you'll be able to see everything that I write and you should be looking at the exact same math page in your book. So you should be on page five. I just go to the bottom to see. So this is lesson one point one. We are talking about number patterns. So our learning objective for today, the dot right next to it, you will find and describe number patterns on an addition table using properties. So an addition table, this is it right here. This is what we're working with. So how can we, our essential question, how can we use properties to explain patterns on the addition table? So first of all, what is a pattern? It's defined for you right here. A pattern is an ordered set of numbers or objects. The order helps you predict what will come next. So you can use the addition table to explore patterns. So let's take a look at it. So orange and green crayons, you might need that for this. If you have them, go for it. That's totally up to you. But I definitely want you to have your math book in front of you, which I did send home uh, for you on Friday. So you should have that open to page five along with a pencil. You don't have to have crayons, but if you've got them, great. Feel free to use them. So we're going to look across each row and down each column. So columns, this is a column. So think columns go up and down. This is a row, okay? So just to make sure you remember that. All right, so let's look at these patterns in yellow and blue going down the row, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yay. And then going down, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. What pattern is that? You should know that. Skip counting by ones. So we have numbered each row and column 0 to 10. So we are skip counting by ones. Okay. Make sure you're following along in your book. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the next problem here. So they want you to shade the row and column orange, which, well, it's already done for you. So we can skip that. What happens when you add zero to a number? Do you know what happens? Well, let's think about it. What happens when you add zero to a number? Let's say I'm, I want to do one plus zero. What does that equal? Well, just one, because the value of zero is nothing. So if you add zero to any number, it's just going to be the same number. So we call that the identity property of addition. So this is something you're going to need to know because we will revisit that later. The identity property of addition states that the sum of any number and zero is that number. Of course, seven plus zero is seven. So remember that identity property. So now we're going to shade the row and column green for the addend of one. All right, so let's go up here and do that. Luckily, I have a green. So in green, I'm going to go across this way. I'm going to start at 1. It's right there. Okay. So I'm going to shade this all green. When I do it, it totally blocks out the number. So I don't want to do it too much. And now I'm going to go up here. Go ones. So of course, with the ones and the one column and row, um, you're going to see that 
you literally just add one to each number. So it's basically like you're counting by one, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, just basic counting. Okay, so now we're gonna shade the wrong column, green, oh, I already did that. Okay, so when you, what happens when you add one to a number? Well, you're shade, you should already know what happens. One plus one is two. Two plus one is gonna be three. So that number is going to be one more than it was, and so on and so forth. Three plus one is four. So you guys already know how to do this, or you should. Okay, now I'm gonna go to page six. So make sure you turn with me. Okay, so for the second activity, we're going to shade all the sums of five orange. Now this is gonna be a little bit different, and I don't have an orange on my smart board, so I'm gonna do reds. Okay, so we're looking for sums of five, okay? So really what you're gonna do is you're gonna to go to each row. I'm just going to put a box around each five, okay? For the sake of time, I won't do all of them, but you are going to notice something. Okay, so look up and then look across. So over here, we are in the five row here. And then if I go over here, it's zero. Okay, so if I take these two numbers, and off to the side, I'm gonna go five plus zero is five. So that's what an addition table is for. So when you take a number on this side, on our column and then our row, you're going to meet them in the middle. So if you take your fingers and then you meet them in the middle, you should end up here, right? So, and you can't see what my fingers are doing, so I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna draw arrows so you can see what I'm talking about. See? You find the two numbers that you're adding in the row and column, and then you meet them in the middle, and that's your answer. So that means four plus one is five. And then same thing here. I'm gonna go to the two, and then the three, Three, sorry that's getting so messy, and then it needs a five. So three plus two is five. Okay, so and so on and so forth. Three plus two is five, yep. Yeah. Then four plus one is five. And now it's getting all messy. Okay, so this will be important here in just a second. So then I want you to write two addition sentences for each sum of five. The first two are started for you. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in because we already know you add zero to five, it's just gonna be five. Okay, so looking at what we just did on the addition chart, you should be able to come up with those. I wrote them off to the side. So you have four plus one is five. Then one plus four is five. And what else did I have? Three and two? Okay. Three plus two is five. But also two and three is five. What pattern do you see? Hmm. Well, one thing I can see is, see over here, I used a four and a one, and I also used a one and a four over here. And then I have a three and a two, also a two and a three. And I notice that every time I get the same sum, five. So this is something that we call the commutative property of addition. It states that you can add two or more numbers in any order and get the same sum. So just like what we did over here. So three plus four will be the same as four plus three. All you did was switch it, but you will still get the same answer. So 
So that's all that they're pointing out to you here with the community commutative. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Commutative, commutative property of addition. Okay. So those are two properties you will have to remember for your homework, commutative property of addition and identity property of addition. So identity, remember, it's about your zeros. So that way you don't mix them up. Okay, I'm gonna keep scrolling. All right. So now we're gonna do our diagonals, meaning we're going across. All right. So again, if you have crayons, great. If you don't, that's totally fine. We're going to shade a diagonal from left to right orange, but I don't have orange, so I'll have to settle with red. Start with the square for one. What pattern do you see? So diagonal, if you don't know what that means, I'll show you. So I'm going to start with this one. Draw a square around it. Okay, diagonal means you're following your corners and you're connecting them, okay? One, three, five, seven, nine, 11, 13. See how, it make, how they meet in the corner? That's what a diagonal is. Okay, huh. now they want to know what pattern we see. One, three, five, seven, nine. Huh, it almost sounds like odd numbers. So I think that's our pattern. We're seeing odd numbers. So I'm gonna write that down. They are all odd numbers. Meaning we can't equally split them. Okay. Now we're going to shade a diagonal from left to right green. And then this time we're starting with two. Okay. Well, green, that's a number I do have. That's a color I've got. Sorry, not number. Okay. Now I'm going to start two. I'm going to go up here. Christmas colors. Two. Then doing the same thing, meeting in our corners. Two, four, six. Ooh, okay. So these are even. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So they are the opposite. They are even numbers. That means I can equally split those numbers into groups if I wanted to. So they're even. All right, now they must write addition census for the shaded boxes. Write even or odd under each addict. Okay, so let's see. If they want two numbers that will add up to six using an odd and an even number. Huh, okay. Hmm. Let's think about that. All right, I'm gonna go up to my chart here and see what I can come up with. So I'm gonna find my six which is right here. I'm going to put a little dot in that box and I'm going to look to here and here. So two plus four would be six. Okay. So that's one. Huh. All right. And so all these numbers are even. So this is even, even. Okay, now they wanted, want us to do seven. Okay, I wanna go back up here, find my seven, which is right here. Then I'm gonna look up and I see a four. Then I'm gonna look this way, three. I'm looking to the side and I'm looking up. So that's a four and then that's a three. Okay. Now I'm going to write that down. Four plus three, seven. Oh, look, all these are odd. Oh, so it looks to me like if I have an even answer, then I need 
even numbers to get that. And then when I have an odd answer, an odd sum, then I need odd numbers to get that. So it seems to me if I add odd numbers, I will get an odd sum. But if I add even numbers, then I get an even sum. So that's a pattern that you will want to be aware of. All right, I'm hopping to the next page. So that will be page seven, should be page seven, yep. Okay, so now we're going to use the addition table on pages, page six for one through nine. So you may have to flip back and forth and that's okay. So we're gonna complete the addition sentences to show the commutative property of addition, okay? You may not even need the addition table for this. So three plus what will give us four, or I'm sorry, yeah. Oh, sorry, I, okay. Three plus something is equal to something. Well, four plus something, okay. Sorry, these are two different problems. The way they had it written out was confusing. So. You can probably insert anything in here, but the other digit is going to have to be four. Okay, so I'm going to put my four right here. It's three plus four is seven. Okay, and this time you're starting with the number four, and I already know three was my other number, so I'm going to put three here. Seven. Okay, the way they had that laid out was a little confusing. Okay. Now on the next problem, number two, they want us to find the sum. Okay, so the word sum. Then use the commutative property of addition to write the related addition sentence. So all you're doing is flipping these numbers. Okay, so eight plus five is what? 13. Okay, and then on the line below that, all you have to do is flip them. Five plus eight, 13. Pretty straightforward, right? Okay, now problem five. Is the sum even or odd, right? Even or odd. So for these problems, and again guys, hopefully you're paying attention still because you will have problems like this on your homework. So eight plus one, I'm just gonna write the answer right here, it's nine. That's odd. Okay, and then three plus nine is 12. That's even this time. Okay, so that's also pretty straightforward. Again, you'll have problems like this on your homework. I'm gonna erase this so I can scroll down. Okay, ah, no, go away. All right. I'm going to skip these problems for now. In the future, we will do these harder questions, think smarter and go deeper. They're DOK two and three. But for now, we're just kind of start easy so you get used to its learning. All right. So for the sake of time, I'm not going to do this one, but I am going to just explain to you how these math lessons will work. I'll always post videos like this. Um, if I'm not doing a live lesson with your group. So um, on your homework, I'm doing very short assignments on its learning, usually about three to four problems. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the problem straight out of your Go Math books, and that will be your independent practice, okay? So once you're done watching this, please make sure um, you answer the questions that are attached to this lesson. I've set it up as like a quiz type. Um, sometimes there'll be short answers, sometimes there'll be multiple choice. So um, make sure that once you're done watching this, go ahead and click the answer assignment button and finish the questions and then submit. So. If you are confused about anything, please make sure to hop on to Google Meet. I'm literally going to be on that all day long. So that way I'm available for you to help you. So please don't hesitate to ask questions or message me. 
And that is all for today.